Pedialyte is one of the most iconic companies in the Indian business history. The management's stellar capital allocation has created such an enormous wealth for its shareholders that 10,000 rupees invested in the company in January 2000 would be worth more than 13 lakh rupees today, and that too excluding dividends. In the past 10 years, the stock price has shot up by a CAGR of 26%, and most importantly, after six decades into the market, today, Pedialyte's Fevicol commands a market share of 70% in the industry. The question is, how did Pedialyte become a goldmine for its investors? What was their business strategy? And most importantly, as investors and students of business, what are the lessons that we need to learn from the legendary rise of Pedialyte? This episode has a teaser video about an alternate investment opportunity, so do check it out before saying goodbye. The answer to Pedialyte's crazy growth lies in this diagram called the Anshoff Matrix. This matrix has four parts based on two variables, which are product and market. And as we move ahead with the story, I'll explain each one of them properly, so pay very close attention. The first step a company takes to establish itself is market penetration. And they do that by entering an existing market by selling an existing product, which is far better than the competitors. In our case, the story of Pedialyte dates way back to 1954, when a young man named Balwant Parikh was operating a small-scale industry in Mumbai, wherein they manufactured pigment emulsions used for textile printing. Now, during this time, Balwan made two important observations. Number one, back then, animal fat glue was used as an adhesive and the problem with it was that it needed to be heated, then it needed to be cooled before it could be used for furnitures. This took a lot of time and was too tedious of a procedure. And secondly, the companies in this space predominantly sold adhesives through middlemen and not to its end users who were carpenters. So the carpenters by default had to go to the hardware stores and buy the glue from them. And this is where, through a lot of trial and error, Pedialyte launched their iconic product that we all know today as Fevicol. And as we all know already, it is easy to use, does not need the cumbersome procedure of animal fat, and it delivered excellent adhesivity as compared to animal fat. So the first thing the team of Pedialyte did was that they bypassed the hardware stores and directly started going to the carpenter warehouses to sell their products. Here's where their salesmen educated the carpenters about how they could use Fevicol to save time and eventually make more profit. And if you look at the math, you will very easily be able to understand the value proposition of Fevicol. To tell you about it, adhesives comprise of only 2% of the total project cost to a carpenter. So if the project cost is 1 lakh rupees, the carpenter barely spends 2000 rupees on adhesive. So it's a low cost but highly critical material. But if you consider the cumbersome procedure of animal fat, the mat actually takes a hit. If you look at one day of labor cost in India today, it's typically 700 rupees to 800 rupees a day, which is for eight hours of work time a day. Now, if one of your labors actually spends eight hours cumulatively in preparing the animal fat glue, then the adhesive is going to cost you MRP plus 800 rupees worth of labor time. Therefore, merely by eliminating the eight hour labor time, the chief carpenter can save 800 rupees per unit work, which is 800 rupees extra profit. So even if Fevicol costs 50 to 100 rupees more, it is absolutely worth it. And hence, the Fevicol sales team went directly to the carpenters to educate them about the glue and spoke to them about the superiority and the ease of its use. And since other companies were catering more to the middlemen like wholesale dealers and hardware shops, Pedialyte was actually able to get the attention of the carpenters. As a result, the first phase of Pedialyte kicked off with Fevicol. And you know guys, what I absolutely loved about Pedialyte is that, during the 1950s and 60s, when nobody ever thought about design seriously, Pedialyte was so keen on communicating its message that even in their logo, they put in efforts to show the two elephants trying to pull a plank of wood in opposite directions. And this was to signify the strength of Fevicol. And this thoughtful design actually made it easier for carpenters to recognize and recollect the brand. Now, during their close interactions with the carpenters, the Pedialyte team actually stumbled upon another critical insight. They saw that while most of the furniture back then was custom built, the carpenters were actually running out of design ideas to offer to their clients. In a way, the service of carpenters itself was commoditized. So you know what? This is where Pedialyte found an opportunity to keep the carpenters hooked to Fevicol. In 1980, Pedialyte launched something called Fevicraft. Fevicraft was a four-page design book that could help the carpenters suggest different design variations to their customers. And this became such a big hit among the carpenters that they started making it a regular issue. In 1989, Pedialyte even came out with a hard-bound furniture book that had superior designs with high utility value. And this solved a major problem for the carpenters and more importantly, 
it strengthened the carpenters association with the pt light brand this is how by bypassing the wholesalers and through a not so modern method of content marketing pt light laid a strong foundation in the industry now the question over here is one product is not enough to turn a company into a billion dollar company right in fact pt light is almost a monopoly in its space so the question is how did they achieve this incredible position well this is where the second phase of the anshof matrix comes in which is product development strategy this is where the business starts selling new products to an existing customer base in this case pt light realized that their interaction with the carpenters had always given them important market insights so to take this one step further they even formed something called the fevicol champions club in 2002 in this exclusive club they brought carpenters to their office showed them demonstrations of all their products and the club members from all over the country were received at the railway station with bands almost like a barat pt light would organize kite festivals for them and would even take them to pilgrimages and this beautiful interaction gave the carpenters a much needed community for their professional and personal growth now some of you might think over here why is an adhesive company organizing these events and that to the carpenters because obviously it's not like the carpenters are going to pledge their loyalty because of kite festival right so the question over here is what is the return on investment for pt light well there are two critical return on investments with the fevicol club number one is market research and number two is feedback loop as it turns out because fevicol organized these events and engaged with the carpenters they started giving critical feedback and started pointing out the important market demands and gaps that were on the rise for example one set of carpenters said that in the balcony and in the kitchen the furniture often gets exposed to water so those furnitures do not seem to last as long as the normal ones another group said that when they handle giant projects the classic fevicol takes a lot of time for curing because of which their high value projects often get delayed and some even said that the lamination that have exposure to heat need a better adhesive so you know what as soon as fevicol got this feedback they started investing heavily into research and development and introduced three products in the market for each one of these problems and these products were fevicol marine fevicol speedex and fevicol heatex and guess what these three value added products together now account for more than half of the revenues from the fevicol brand in fact fevicol marine became the most preferred choice for any woodwork that was going to be exposed to water and humidity this product was so extraordinary that it ensured that the bonded plywood would remain intact even if it was kept in water for 48 hours or boiling water for an hour this is how by identifying the gaps in the market through carpenters and with a strong focus on its quality Fevicol soon became the number one adhesive brand in India. Such is the brand name of Fevicol that tomorrow if a client asks the carpenter to use some other adhesive, the carpenter would instantly say that he could definitely use some other adhesive, but he would not guarantee the quality or longevity of the final outcome if the brand was anything but Fevicol. And you know what guys this reliability and trust in the Fevicol brand is so much today that while the market was dominated by credit vendors back then Fevicol did not operate on credit at all Now the question over here is credit is super important for stores right then if another brand gave a 30 day credit period to the hardware stores it must be very easy for them to penetrate isn't it Then how is it that PD Light still remained a market leader for so long Well the answer to that lies in the 2% math that we did back then Like we saw before, the cost of the adhesive in a furniture is just two percent. So, out of one lakh rupees of the project cost for making a king size bed, the adhesive would cost just two percent, which is two thousand rupees. Now, if the carpenter shift to another brand that is offering lower prices, he will definitely end up saving five hundred rupees. But if this adhesive does not stick the woodwork together, and one year later if this bed breaks apart. then that meager saving of 500 rupees would ruin his entire project worth 1 lakh rupees and this will obviously result into loss of client therefore the risk is to reward ratio over here is very very high as a result even when multiple brands offered better prices the carpenters were reluctant to switch because of which even with credit it was difficult for other companies to come in and this gave pt light two incredible superpowers number 1 tomorrow they can easily increase the price of their products and yet the carpenters will choose fevicol over others and more importantly because of no credit cycles pt light was able to maintain an ultra strong balance sheet which gave them better return on investment and also drove shareholder confidence and this brings us to the third part of the matrix which is market development strategy wherein a business sells existing products in new markets 
This is where Fevicol's iconic marketing campaigns come in. And needless to say, their commercials were the funniest and the most remarkable campaigns of all. In fact, even while I was doing this case study, my entire team was able to recollect 10-year-old commercials of Fevicol merely by verbal descriptions. And I'm 100% sure that even you remember them. And the beauty of these commercials was that it could appeal to every person in India regardless of what their background was. And at the same time, it communicated the message of its products very very clearly. This is the reason why the brand awareness and the utility value of Fevicol products began spreading through the lens and breadth of the country. As a result, Fevicol became a recognizable name in tier 2, 3, 4 cities of India and eventually became a market leader. Fun fact is that the Fevicol brand was so respected that the plywood stores of tier 2 tier 3 cities started keeping Fevicol right at the beginning of the store to attract more buyers. And some of them even used it as a loss leader so that the carpenters there would start buying plywood from them. This is how Fevicol started expanding its market and started selling an existing product in new markets eventually dominated them and became a market leader. And lastly, we come to the fourth part of the matrix wherein a business introduces new products in new markets. In this case, we have the strategic acquisitions made by PD Light during that time which made it a market leader even in alien markets. And some of the best acquisitions include MCL in the sealants category, Doctor Fixit in the waterproofing segment, Steel Grip in insulation tape segment and Roof in the tiling and flooring adhesive segment. And now PD Light doesn't just have a strong foothold in India but many other countries all across the world. And today PD Light's Fevicol commands a market share of 70% in the industry. And this brings me to the most important part of the episode and that are the lessons from the case study. Moving on to the lessons the first thing that we need to learn from this case study is that the practice of empathy is a billion dollar strategy in this case it was the empathy that pd light practiced with the carpenters that helped them capitalize on the crucial gaps in the market number 2 risk is to reward ratio is a very good metric to understand the pricing power of a company in this case it was a risk is to reward ratio of using fevicol that enabled them to play without credit cycles and help pd light increase their prices consistently and lastly As investors and leaders of business, the arch of metrics is a very good way to understand diversification. As investors, you could use that to understand the trajectory of your portfolio companies, and as an entrepreneur, you could use it as a framework to track your diversification strategies better. That's all from my side for today, guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button and automate YouTube Baba happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.